Hello, hello, audio apocalyptica. This is Johnny Franks on Active Radioactive Radio for the excited survivor who found an old can of Kite Elegante meat type cat food and will live for at least another couple of days. Coming to you live from my mountaintop bunker with tantalizing tips, tricks, and tip top tunes. You know, with all this free content, I'm providing a real public service here. And Johnny's happy, but also sad. Because Johnny's a complex guy, with feelings and urges, and who can he share them with? But that's not what you're here for. I mean, Johnny's okay, he has his robots who are always there for him, and they listen, but really, it's no substitute for human companionship and human... touch. Like, a long conversation that goes on and on, and a lingering gaze, maybe a hand on a shoulder, and then... (laughs) Well, let's get to the nudes. I was pretty sure this pile had something. Uh, No. Wait. Ah, this is something. Uh, Okay, let's see. Johnny's heard a few rumors lately about Camp Hodge. Seems it's what you'd call brimming with weapons. And no small amount of ammo is being bandied about as the numbers nestled under that roof increase. Now, Johnny's a little uncomfortable with militias. Too many similarly-minded people in enclosed spaces leads to creepy, freaky groupthink. And before you know it, it's pretty easy to just shoot whoever might look at you funny. Not that I would. I'm more of a pacifist. The kind who would run away screaming if a gun was waved around in his face. Which is a perfectly normal reaction, and nothing to be ashamed of at all. But if you are ashamed, that's okay, too. You can always cover it up with one of those tip-top tunes to get your toes tapping. After all, that's nobody's business but yours. And here's Nobody's Business with Ain't Nobody's Business. That segue was smooth. If I should take a notion
You know what else is nobody's business? How many supplies you've got stockpiled. Now, I've got plenty of my very own, but we all know that not everyone's as lucky as Johnny. So my friend Julio sent along a little information about his technological trade. Take it away, Julio. Hello. My name is Julio. And I am very excited to share with you my Roboporium. My robots can accomplish any task you wish. Tell them... GX500. Of course, Master Julio. Our Roboporium is the first of its kind. Staffed entirely by robots. With the exception of Master Julio, of course. And your robo satisfaction is 100% guaranteed. Your safety and security are of utmost importance. That's right, Master Julio. Not only can we perform robo-tasks around your house and home, but we can also provide robo-security services. Take a listen. That's the sound of robo-safety. We also offer a wide variety of robo-services, such as cooking, cleaning, butchering, recording journal entries, detecting radiation levels, full dental, and more. So please, visit Julio's Robo Emporium. Be sure to holster your weapons before approaching. Great tip, Master Julio. Our security is fully automated, so any threat is robo-neutralized in seconds. We can be found if you follow the old 15 to Genesis, then as well. You will see our sign. Thank you for your time, folks, and we'll robo-see you soon. Julio's a bit new at this. Doesn't show at all, does it? Oh, Julio provided a little more information. Uh, for the best customer service, be sure to approach the Roboporium slowly, throw all your cash on the ground, and put your hands up. And now we move on to another hot, sexy tune. Let's go back in time to Dance the Night Away with Billy Murray at the Mermaid's Fancy Ball. I chance to be the mermaids gave a very swell affair. I looked out from my submarine at the queerest ball I'd ever seen. Not a soul on earth I knew was there. Of course they did the tango and no one made a slip. Of all the guests assembled there, each one could do the dip at the mermaid's fancy ball in Father Neptune's hall. The little eels were pickled and they did a naughty wiggle. Although it shocked a few old crabs, it made the bluefish giggle at the mermaid's fancy ball. They had no bar at all. But I didn't hear a sigh, for not a guest was dry at the mermaid fancy ball. A mackerel who was soused, he said, lay down in an oyster bed, which put the oysters in an awful stew. The clam stretched out their little necks, which made that mackerel very vexed. The things he said I dare not tell to you. But when the drumfish beat it, 
that was the worst of all. For without a drum, you know, it's very hard to give a ball at the mermaid fancy ball in Father Neptune's hall. The blackfish did a cakewalk, and it surely was the limit. A lobster turned quite red and said the tango isn't in it, but the queerest noise of all. I heard a codfish fall when Father Neptune, wise old guy, at a mermaid winked his eye. At the mermaid fancy ball, at the mermaid fancy ball, in Father Neptune's hall. The weak fish fainted dead away, creating quite a bustle. It made them very strong again when they were fed on muscle at the mermaid fancy ball. The sweetest thing of all. For dessert they served a dish of delicious jellyfish at the mermaid fancy ball. Ah, a throwback to a simpler time, when there was enough water on earth that people thought up sentient half-fish sea creatures to live in it. Such good times. You know what else is good times? Johnny's mail sack. Let's see what we got this time. Ah, here we go. At Anna R. 1288 writes, There's this crazy knife lady who's threatened to stab me several times. Hard to shake her off. Advice? Okay, Anna R. 1288, it's a good question, but here's the thing. You're not giving me a whole lot to work with here, and there are two sides to every story. What I want to know is more about you. And the question really is, are you stab-worthy? I want you to think about this. Here's a lady, you call her Crazy Knife Lady, but I bet she has a name just like you do. Although your name sounds like gibberish, but it's not for Johnny to judge. So here's this lady, and out of all the people in this mixed-up wasteland, she wants to stab you. She's told you so on multiple occasions. Her message is simple consistent. You know she's telling the truth. So think about that. Think about how she's reached out to you. She wants to stab you. That sounds pretty special to me. I want you to stand up, I want you to confront this person, and I want you to say, I am worth it. I am worthy of being stabbed. I am listening. Now, if this crazy knife lady really does try to stab you, then yes, by all means, run away screaming into the night. But I bet that's not really what the crazy knife lady wants, Anna R. 1288. What she really wants is to be heard. Let her know that you hear her. You respect her. And really, I think things are going to change between you and her. Mark my words. Now, seems I've got a recording here with a crooked smiley face scratched into it. Oh, and there's a name. Joe. Again? Said to push the red circle button and I pressed the red circle button. Oh, um, hello. Mr. Franks, are you inside the recording box? It's Joe again. Thanks for answering my question, but then I had another question. Because I listened to your show, and you said we should not chase pipe dreams. and I didn't even know pipes had dreams. I mean, I, I got this pipe wrench, and I've been wrenching pipes when I find them, but does that wake them up? Should I let the pipes sleep? I was thinking about that because I wouldn't want somebody to wrench me while I was having a dream. Uh, that's it. Oh, and, uh, that Janice lady sounds real nice. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, hey, Joe, it's good to hear from you again. You definitely have some interesting ideas there. First of all, congrats on having a wrench. That's excellent. Top-notch having skill you got there. About the pipes, though, Joe, well, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the pipes sleep very, very deeply. Waking them up is no small feat, so you don't have to worry too much about that. The bad news is that you still could wake up a pipe, and there's no telling what could be inside it. So I'm saying you should probably avoid the pipes, Joe. There are plenty of other things to do with a pipe wrench other than wrenching pipes. Think of creative solutions to creative problems. Why, you can use that wrench for all kinds of things, like a hammer to squish a radioactive rat with, and then cook that rat over a fire with some sludge water and make a nice broth. And if anyone tries to take your soup, why, now you have a wrench handy. 
and who knows what kind of extra ingredients you might find. Maybe something you think might be a vegetable. Or it could just be an old sock. But if you put it in the soup, it'll still get warm. Maybe even tasty. Probably not, but what I'm trying to say, Joe, is that anything's possible. You just keep on with that wrench, and I think you'll find all kinds of great uses for it. Let the pipe sleep, Joe. And hey, looks like we've got another update from that sneaky snaker, Remick. Let's see what she's got for us. Hey, Johnny. It is Remick again. So, I got to thinking about Dexter's logs, and based on where I found the first and third, I traced a course between them, like, you know, in inside my head, not literally, because, yeah. Um, and that yielded what I'm pretty sure are Dexter's tracks. So, like, adult, light on his feet, but really bad at hiding his tracks. Does that seem right to you? So anyway, being the resourceful young woman I am, I tracked back from the third to the first log and found the second one. I'm kind of maybe really good at my job, right? I mean, okay, honestly, I'm probably the best, but I try to stay humble because it helps the dummies underestimate me. But seriously, I can find anything. Get out of any sticky situation. Oh, I'm so good. But, um, anyway, here you go. Dexter Benchley, log two. Ooh, exploring really works up an appetite. I think I've dropped ten pounds in the last week. Food's scarce out here, and there's a lot of walking. A lot of running, actually, because not everyone's all that friendly. <laughs> and sometimes it's not a person, but a thing. You know, a thing you can't explain anything to, and, well, good thing I found some water. I don't think it's irradiated, but it's kind of hard to tell out here. Uh, one of those fancy schmancy robots might be able to help me, but I think they're pretty expensive. Henrietta's been great at keeping me safe, though, don't worry. I heard this ad on someone's radio for this place called Oxana's, and they have food. I hear it's like an honest-to-God restaurant. I can't wait. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. I poked through some rubble, and I found a few things to trade. It doesn't seem like much, but who knows? I'm, maybe once I get there, I can trade it all in for a big, heaping, steaming bowl of meat stew. Onward, I march. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I guess the last time when Dexter said the food was off, he was talking about at Oxana's. That's weird. Maybe I shouldn't say that on the air, or Oksana's going to come after me. Don't want to end up on the wrong end of her butcher knife. Obs. Oh, I was going to mention that I found some weird stuff near my house. Yeah, some weird stuff. You want to know what it was? It was some robot parts and a broken recording. Lucky me, I was able to get part of it to play. And, uh, well, just listen. Hey, Remick! Great job out there today! You, lady, were born to snake. Oh, thanks, Remick! You're too kind! If I knew you were coming, I'd have snaked cake. <laughs> oh, stop! I'm blushing! You're too much! Johnny! What the hell? I mean, so what? I talk to myself when I'm snaking, because I gotta stay positive, you know? Can't wait around for others to compliment you, or you'll be waiting your whole life. No matter how much ass you kick. Plus, it helps me concentrate... And I admit that my jokes sometimes fall so flat I can't even force myself to laugh. At least no one ever hears them. Except I guess you do now, so... Great. If any more of those ever make it on the air. Ever? You just remember that I know where you live, Franks. Alright, so... Gotta go. Got some new runes to check out. Uh, Snake for ammo and other treasures. Maybe a can of... Kitte elegante meat type cat food. I love that stuff, you know? So brown and juicy and fishy. Oh, man, I really hope I find some. Okay, see ya. Oh, Remick, that's your funniest one yet. <laughs> Look, Johnny hasn't sent any robots out in a while. I'm sure sometimes they just get a little bored and lonely and figure they'll go out and find something to do. I'll definitely have a talk with them about that. But thanks for the update, Remick. Remember, it's always a good idea to check abandoned cellars, as long as you've got protection, because who knows what could pop up down there. Stay safe. 
And that goes for all of you too, dear listeners. Johnny loves your mail and wants more, so drop me a line anytime at Mountaintop Stud on the Twitters or send an email to host at active radioactive radio.com. Regardless of the medium, be sure to include the words OK to Air so that Johnny knows it's cool to share your deets with my wide range of listeners. But not too many deets because nobody really cares that much, do they? Except for Johnny. Rest assured that Johnny loves you. Until next time, my audio apocalyptica. Keep your knives sharp and your pipes wrenched and keep your Johnny Franks. Active Radioactive Radio, Episode 3. Johnny's a Complex Guy. Featuring the voice talents of Jack Kalk as Johnny Franks, Jeffrey Bridges as Julio, Susan Bridges as GX500, Philip Weber as Joe, Jesse Moore as Remick, and Dave Morgan as Dexter. Written and directed by Jeffrey and Susan Bridges. Joe's Question, written by Dragon X Blink. Active Radioactive Radio theme taken from Mainstem by the United States Army Band Pershing Zone. Featured music selections. Ain't Nobody's Business by Nobody's Business under the CC BY-NC-ND 3.0 license and At the Mermaid's Fancy Ball by Billy Murray under the CC BY-NC 2.5 license. Standard noise reduction was performed on this piece. Active Radioactive Radio, created by Jeffrey and Susan Bridges. Copyright 2016, Pendant Production. For more information, visit PendantAudio.com. Thanks for listening. Johnny's advice may result in your untimely demise if it is followed. Please keep out of range of anyone who might be trying to stab you. Johnny may or may not enjoy tip elegante cat food. Either way, it's none of your business. Johnny makes no claims of responsibility for robot actions in his vicinity or otherwise. <laughs>